15 nos hizo soñar con esa botlane. Y ese hombre es... ¡Messi! And on the red side, it's the deadliest Void Reaver in the tournament, racking up 25 kills in Assassin mode last week. Put your hands together for Mithy's opponent, it's Reaver! I'm feeling so beta right now. Why? All these like alpha males shouting, Leva. <laughs> Yeah, you and me and our girly voices, Mitch. <laughs> Sadly not suited for the hype, but we can talk about the 1v1s. Yep. And we know, obviously, Mithy very well. Uh, he's a player who, uh, after the EU vs. NA first game, I saw him backstage and I tried to explain to him that when there's this little effect around the ball from Oriana, it's, it's a shockwave and you can flash it. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want to hear that. Like, he was actually pretty down after that game. He was like, yeah, we could do anything, you know. I died too many times, now it's time for revenge. We know him very well, uh, we consider him a friend, yet you, right after the game, you walk up to him and you tell him shoot a flash to Zoro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm helping, hope, I'm just helping. I hope the world sees what a friend uh, the Fisio actually is right now. I am just trying to give him some advice here. Tom Kench ban, it's happening. These bans are like, kind of all over the place, you know, no one has actually played Tom Kench yet, but Levy obviously played in the IWCA, where we had the 1v1s, where Turkey introduced Tom Kench and it destroyed some of those AD carries. So he has a lot of respect for the pick. Yeah, the pick kind of developed for um, two different reasons. The voice actor that initially did the Tom Kench sadly passed away in the Turkey region. It turns out his uh, champion is pretty strong 1v1, yeah. so it's a double win, an homage, and a strong champion. But let's not focus on too much. Fans are running through. Yeah, funny story about the cannon ban. Uh, you saw Mithy laugh before. His match history from the practice beforehand is like 10 cannon games in a row. And he was like, oh, if Levy actually checks my match history, he's gonna ban it. And then I'm done. It's like all he's been practicing. Caitlyn is open. Caitlyn should never be open in 1v1. She's too strong. Poke is great. Sustain is fine with Warlords. She's so difficult to play against. Yeah, difficult to play against. It's actually really interesting with the new Caitlyn. He just locks it in. Five seconds left. Mithy has not been watching the meta <laughs> evolve. Oh. And when we see the Caitlyn locking, obviously, on the screen, that can be just a, a Teemo fighting against it. Teemo can get outranged. Um, yeah. I think the way to go about it is you want to kind of eat trap combo, actually, to keep him out of range and then get the headshot. You can actually buffer both the Q and the trap with your E. Right. And then you just want to outdistance the Teemos and then disengage once you get blinded. Yeah, exactly. And one of the ways, again, you can play around these AD carries is, again, by using the, the, the bushes Brush, on the yeah. side, the brushes on the side. So effectively, but Caitlyn is the 180 carry who can kind of counter that because she can put a trap in there and make it really hard for you. We did oversee the team move. Once again, was a bait. Uh, it got swapped. Last second, it's Caitlyn versus Caitlyn. Both players realized we didn't ban it. We have to pick it. The and rule of 1v1. The rule of 1v1. And I actually like the heal from Mithy here because yeah. Caitlyn, like, it's not a burst champion, so the barrier won't actually get to very often at least. Yeah. Unless you use it on the Q and the auto-attack after. If you get a Q headshot that you can barrier, maybe it's worth it, but that means you have to be on top of like your stuff. Yeah, which I mean, <laughs> normally a pro player would be. You would expect, but then again, um, we've seen worse from Ify today. <laughs> yeah, he's the man running heal, though. <laughs> he also changed it. Man, these guys are just changing. They're all changing the time. everything. We're actually trying to bait all of you guys, so it's it's not Timo. It is Kate versus Kate. It is actually it is Kate. barrier versus like barrier. Not, we might be wrong about some things about this heal that. The Fischl is seeing, he has been seeing some things lately. I thought it was heal. The voices inside my head said it was heal. And then it's actually barrier right now. So instead. we're heading into uh, the Howling Abyss. Who's going to take this one? Mithy or the jungler? Ooh, I mean, uh, so far we have seen uh, Mithy on Zyra. Mm. That didn't go too well. So uh, automatically you put some of the... Some of the... <laughs> emphasis on, emphasis the on, on, on Levy here because... <laughs> he has played a lot of, like, these maps here. Because I actually talked to Clement. And in the Southeast Asian uh, region, and especially in, in Vietnam, where these players are from, they actually really love 1v1s. They play them a lot. They say it's like one of the favorite, favorite game modes. I don't think the European players spend too much time 1v1ing. Good uh, early start from Levy here, getting two early traps in. So, Because what this does, and a lot of people don't know, is that Mithy is now going to lose access to the wave early. Obviously, Levy will have to attack the same creep over and over. Mithy could start with Q. He has now skill trap as well, but he has lost kind of the momentum here. Let's see what he I wants to do. So double trap start. Caitlyn's back in the day used to start Q for pushing. The problem is with a mana gated map, it is not ideal to do so. 
Especially Aww. if Kaelin plays out of the wave, because you can never then get the wave and a Kaelin at the same time. Misty does have a green father's gift, though. If he can actually step out and just trade like one auto attack with Levy, it would be in Misty's favor, just able to slide to here. The game will not be decided level one when it's Kate versus Kate. Not exactly an all in chat. He started Q. Clicked on the wrong Kaelin. Once again, the casters are getting baited. Yep. Time to retire, Mitch. And you <laughs> and me both. Twice. <laughs> Become an observer. So Mithy looking to utilize that Q to get the push going early. Good trades in between all attacks. That's what you always want to do. The problem is Mithy, if he forgets about these traps being placed in the brushes next to him, he may the pay the price later on. Obviously, he has a little bit of access to the wave earlier. And notice how again he's just using Q on minions. Yeah. Like he knows, yes, I could try and hit the other Caitlyn, but that damage difference probably won't make that big of a difference. But getting the push advantage, especially if you can get these minions on the tower, where the tower will take some of them, you can suddenly get a bit of a CS lead. Yeah, and he's definitely being rewarded for the push because the champs behind him are slowly fading away. Again, at least hitting one minion at a time. So when it does get sidestep, just like you said, there is still value there pushing on. But this is not the most exciting matchup. Like, Kate versus Kate is very much a farm fest normally. And then seeing, can I poke the guy down enough so he has to go back to base, take like a bad recall, and then maybe try some super risky trade in the end. But it's so hard for both these Caitlyns to actually like all in each other. Yeah, that's why it's up to us right now to kind of highlight the nuances. Levy going in for an E all attack trade right there because he knows he has to stay in on the back end that will fill up his mana again. So he may as well try for it. They never want to overtap your mana when you go for the crystals. If he still has the push. Remember, Caitlyn can stack headshot uh, much faster in the brushes. That's why Mithy is always staying away from the other brush. Obviously, the fact that you can get Artax reset as well. Oh, he really wants to get in there and smack him with the headshot, but Levy just staying just out of range. And we've that's been on this side for quite a while now. Yeah, and that's kind of the cadence, you know. See headshot, step away from the vehicle, oh. walk up for EQ combo. That's a good combo by Levy here. EQ into, obviously, the headshot that gets generated for free when you land that E. He takes some damage, and now the next wave comes in much sooner for the side of fire because it is near their tower, which means Levy can kind of turn the push around. If yeah. you trade long enough auto versus auto, the next wave will, will arrive when your initial wave isn't cleared out yet, and you will bounce the wave. And I really like that I call it there from Levy, just saying, like, I can go in and actually use my full rotation, where Mithya has just been trying to poke the Qs over and over and hit, like, one or two only during the game. So Levy got that advantage going and missing this one. Sad for him. Though. Oh, this one is good though. Getting the barrier from Mithy. No mana from Levy. Now both of them will start to stand with Warlords. Yeah, obviously, sometimes it is good to use barrier not in an all-in, but just to make sure that you can... Again, there is barely any all-in, you know. There, it really is a poke game. So yeah, if you do trade your barrier for some of his mana in some of these pokes, and maybe like one hit in return, good trade from Mithy there, but he's still slightly down. And yeah, this means the first base goes to Levy. Which means he can then control the next wave again with those items. Extra. He will likely choose the base here at the end. Because otherwise, if Mithy gets the bounce, the same thing will happen that we saw in the kill of match. It is just very hard, though, getting like an item advantage when it's 33 to 31 CS here. Even if he gets like one or two CS advantage, you end up just going like Dorans, Dorans, and then like another potion coming in. And then you kind of go even anyway. It honestly pays off at the end. If you get two of these situations where you base successfully, you'll get more items, which gives more pressure at the end if you're racing to 100 CS. Ooh. Or you can take tower shot. That also works. Let's just say it was the disrespect tower shot. Showing Mithy, I don't need this HP. I can take a tower shot. I can still beat you. I wonder if he should have based there. He had like 1.8k gold. He definitely went for it. Maybe he wants to base on a cannon wave. I mean, that's the important thing here, right? You know, they've been farming for such a long time, you can actually get BF swords, or you can aim for sustain instead and get some more lifesteal and not just value the full damage. Look how Levy's also explaining in a brush here. So despite having no mana, he's getting more headshots per wave, which means he can start pushing. I don't think the tower is really objective in this matchup. No, definitely not. It is hoping that Mithy either misses a CS because of the tower, or Mithy is busy last hitting a CS when Levy can then hit him once or twice for free. Now he's taking a lot of minions to try and get the relic. And oh! Down to level six. And no barrier. No barrier. Used before, Levy just with enough damage. And great understanding of how much damage he could actually deal right there. Yeah, he stayed because he didn't want to take pre preferential base and go for the long game. He instead wanted to just main dominance. He switched over just when that relic was spawning. Notice how he knows the map because he played on the left side near the brush, generating push, generating head.